You ever looked at an interior render and thought, yeah, that's pretty cool? Well, then you're in luck. That's what this video is all about. Architecture, and specifically interiors. How to go about creating an interior, just like this one here. So we're gonna be demoing it on this bathroom scene, obviously, uh, but the concepts can be used to create any number of scenes from a kitchen to a lounge room uh, or whatever. Really the only thing that would differ would be the objects you'd put in it. So instead of a couch, we'll put a vanity countertop in it or whatever, right? Um, so yeah, we're gonna be talking all about that, how to use uh, some of Blender's new tools that Blender comes with uh, to set up and create a room with, uh, with windows, floor, ceiling, uh, create a countertop. Um, yeah, and so we'll be doing that in this video and then in part two, because this is a two-part series, uh, we'll be doing the materials and the lighting, the textures and, and all that stuff. So before we get into it though, I do want to explain uh, or talk about the concept, the, the architectural concept, because when you think about making an interior scene like this, like if you were to just follow this tutorial, right? You take this tutorial and you follow it right to the end and you get the result and then you go, yay, I know how to do interiors, right? And then you decide, right, so I'm gonna make a, a new scene now, okay? So you start up a new scene and then what do you do? right? Because you followed a tutorial that's paint by numbers. You got the exact measurement of the room. You, you followed these steps in order to put the window here, whatever. But what do you do if you actually want to make a completely new scene? Where do you actually start? Do you start with a photo? Do you start sketching things out? Should you have a, a floor plan? Um, and it's something I think a lot of tutorials sort of miss. So I wanted to spend, you know, at least five minutes talking about that. Um, so I'll show you the method that I used uh, to create that bathroom scene uh, right there. So the first thing I did was I went to this website called house, house.com, uh, which is sort of the go-to website today for all architectural photos, interiors, exteriors, or whatever. It's really fantastic. And I'm so thrilled that it exists because it's perfect for, uh, for this sort of thing. So what I do is I went to the photo section and then you just click on the room type that you are actually trying to create. So in this case, I was making a bathroom. So I clicked on bathroom, right? It loads up. And then the first thing I did was go through here and just try and find an image that I liked or a bunch of images that I liked. So I would scroll through here um, and then let's say I liked this one here and I was, you know, thinking of maybe making something there. I could save it into an idea book because <laughs> House doesn't let you uh, save the images directly from the site. But if you just click save, you can save it into your custom idea book or whatever. So I would save it in there and then do that for a few pages and just keep strolling through and just find the different images that, that you sort of like. And then when you get to the end of it, you go to your idea books you find an image like this, uh, sorry, you, you, you find your idea book like this, and you've got a whole collection now of, uh, of different bathroom ideas that you might possibly wanna make. Um, and so then you wanna sort of narrow it down and try and you know pick something that still interests you, but is still achievable. So in my case, what I did was I decided on this image right here. Very simple, because I actually was thinking of making a tutorial back then, so I thought, you know, it's gotta be simple enough that it could fit in a tutorial. So I went for this image right here. Then I took that image, this is the photo, and then I made that image in Blender. Didn't really do much creatively to it. I mean, I put in a towel rack, but other than that, it was pretty much the photo, right? Didn't really do anything creative. But I got to the end of it and I thought, you know, it looks okay, but I think it could really be improved because the, the person who took this photo was you know hired by a person to come and take the photo. So it was probably, uh, maybe it was a home renovation. So maybe they started with this specific floor plan of the bathroom and then they added in this countertop. Maybe they were working on a budget. Maybe they didn't want the window there, but it's there anyway. So there's a lot of things that are going on in this image that were only there because of the limitations that they had when they took the photo. So I thought, how could that be improved? So, um, I changed it to look like this. Now these changes came from looking at more photos on house. 
So I took these uh, these light bulbs here and I put them in there. I took the idea of having a wooden countertop instead of it being gray. Um, I took the tiles off this one here, having a marble tile across the entire wall. I really like that idea. And then this mirror, this square mirror, I thought that that silver sort of uh, edge to it looked really quite nice as well. Again, I don't know what's gonna look good, but I'm just trying different ideas and picking them from different images. Now, as it turns out, I wasn't a big fan of that wood there. So I changed it back to gray uh, based off looking at another image. I thought, yeah, the gray can actually look quite nice, kind of ho homogenous uh, with the rest of the scene. Uh, then I expanded it. So I just, I thought, you know, it's quite narrow. It's quite squash looking. What if I expanded it a bit? Sort of let the room breathe a little bit. Um, and then to put something on the left-hand side, I put in a shower. Uh, then I thought, you know, this this square mirror here and these vintage bulbs, it, it feels a little bit disconjoined. Like, you know, you've sort of got many different styles going on at the same time. Let's stick to a style. And I found this image on House, and I really liked these uh, this this decoration here. This these lampshades, this oval shaped mirror, and this vintage uh, faucet. Even though I didn't use the exact. Uh, design for the faucet, that similar style. So sort of going for a traditional sort of vintage sort of look. And I really like that. I played around with different um, di different angles and things, different sunlight, just throwing stuff against the wall, seeing what works. I put a bathtub on the left there, I think, you know, because I saw another image or something. And now at this point, I posted the image on Twitter and I asked for feedback. Um, yeah, I basically said, Throw, throw your worst at me. What looks weird? What looks funny? Just tell me what you think. Uh, and people said that the marble behind the mirror, like it was too much. There's too much marble going on in the scene. It's very hard to focus. So I got rid of the marble. I just left it on the left-hand side. I wasn't really sure which one to keep though. So I tried, you know, putting it on the right. Um, I added some different decorations to the center here. Again, just trying what works. I don't know what's gonna work. I'm just throwing stuff in the scene, trying to get a general mood as I sort of go along. Uh, eventually I put the marble on the left-hand side again. Then I thought this countertop here is a little bit too simple. I thought, you know, since I want the focus to be mostly just on this, this, uh, this vanity here, why don't I change it and try and go for something that fits more of the style, which is that traditional sort of look. So I found this vanity uh, again on house and I, I modeled it and put it in here. And then I was sort of thinking, um, you know, th this looks okay, but it looks a little bit bland. These walls here, everything, there's not really a clear focal element to it. So I really liked how in this image, they've got the same problem. So they put in this really big, green uh, green plant there. So I put in a plant there. I like these slats on the walls here. Probably really great dust collectors. <laughs> a real nightmare I'm sure to live with, but I thought it added some visual interest. I really like that. And then I put a little pot plant down there as well. Didn't like the pot plant, but I like the slats and I like the, uh, the plant, so they stayed. Again, just throwing ideas around, not really sure where it's gonna go yet, but just trying a whole bunch of different things. I was sort of getting to the end there, but I wasn't really quite sure where to take it. The focal element, I tried a couple of things, maybe making it uh, orange jar or an orange towel. Wasn't a big fan of orange, but I liked green. It sort of has a more natural look to it. Um, and then at this point, I tried a different sort of color style, different lighting. I had some sunlight beaming in through here, and this is where it really started to look good, and that's when it became the final image there. So I say all this to say that I didn't have an end, like I didn't have a drawing to start with. I didn't really even have a photo. I mean, well, yes, I started with, with one photo, that one in the top left-hand corner there. But the rest of it was just a process of trying a bunch of things in the scene. So don't feel bad if you're, you know, if you know you want to make an interior scene, but you don't know where to start. Because often you can just start and then just steal from a bunch of different images to create something new from it. Now, this this word steal has very negative connotations because we're taught since we're little kids, like stealing is bad. But really when, when you're talking about um, about creative work, stealing is incredibly important, dare I say it, essential to creating anything. So there's a great book, Steal Like an Artist, which I recommend if you uh, if you haven't read it yet. Uh, but I'll, I'll just use this one quote from the book, which is that if you have one person you're influenced by, everyone will say you're the next whoever. But if you rip off 100 people, everyone will say, you're so original, right? 
uh, which is so great because it, it, it's dispelling this myth that uh, that you know that, that original thinkers, that the true originals, they have their ideas already and they just they they birth them. <laughs> that sounds gross, but they they just they come up with them and they just hatch them. But they're all ideas, all our original uh, you know our idols out there. They're all creating stuff based off things that they have um, have already talked about. So that's that's the process that I use to uh, to create that bathroom image there. And that is a process that I highly recommend giving a go if you have the time. It's um, it's not as fast, I guess, as if you're, like if you're a really good painter, you could probably paint a whole bunch of different concepts really quickly. But if you're like me and maybe you just, you know, wanna get started and throw stuff out there, it's a really good approach. If you wanna learn more about this this process, by the way, about stealing and, you know, how to form ideas, I did this presentation at the Blender Conference just a couple of months ago, where I talk about the seven habits of highly effective artists. This one being stealing is one of them. If you wanna watch it, you can click right there. Okay, so that's the intro, right? That is how to actually come up with your idea for creating um, a new scene in Blender, right? Now we're actually gonna to get to the meat of it, which is making the darn thing. So open up a new scene in Blender and let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is delete everything so that we can focus on our room. Now, the old fashioned way of, uh, of doing interiors was to do everything by hand. And by that, like, you know, you start with a floor, you scale that out, maybe you add in a cube or something and this will be like the walls of your room, um, you know. But this this process, doing it like that, is it's a little bit disconjointed because you have to, you know, say I wanna make this a, a different size, make this one a little bit longer, like this, right? Make it a longer looking room. Then I gotta grab this and I gotta make that a little bit longer. And then when I wanna make a window or something, I have to like physically cut into the building and make these loop cuts and extrude that out. You know, and, and you just keep going on. And so making changes to the to the room and the structure becomes difficult when you have to move everything about piece by piece. And um, yeah, it's rather annoying. So thankfully, uh, there is a better solution. Um, I don't know when it was added, maybe a year or two ago, perhaps. Maybe it was only just a recent release. But uh, there's an add-on. So if you go to File, User Preferences, and then underneath Add-ons, type in Arc. And you should see it right there, Archimesh. So go ahead and uh, and check that box right there. It'll be off by default. Uh, but then once you've done that, you will see if you hit Shift A, uh, underneath Mesh, you'll see an option down here for Archimesh where you can add individual objects. Or if you push T in, uh, to bring up the toolbar, you'll see way down here at the bottom, you've got a panel that says Archimesh with those same options right there, room, column, and all that stuff. Now. It seems a little bit daunting, I guess, all these little buttons, what do they do and all that jazz. But really, there's only a few you really need to know. There's only a few that we'll use um, in this tutorial. So the first one is the room. That's the one that you start with. That's the one where everything happens. Now, when you click this, it obviously doesn't look like a room and there's not really any options that you can uh, you can tweak. And that's because it's actually underneath uh, the properties on the uh, on the right-hand side, so you can now hide your toolbar, and then down here, you'll see it says room. So here you could change the height of the room, uh, the thickness, uh, whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave the uh, the height at 2.4, which I believe is the standard height for most, um, most interior rooms. I think it can go up to like 2.7 perhaps, but not much more than that. Um, but anyways, so here, th this is just one wall, okay? Because it's got number of walls and it says one. So if I increase that to two, you can see it's made another one, and three and four. Now this isn't Sesame Street, so I won't just <laughs> continue counting. Um, but when you when you change this, when you change this number here, you can see that extra panels appear underneath it. So you get another panel for every wall that you've got. So for each of these walls, you can change the length like that. Um, and if I make it minus, you can see that it now becomes inverted, right? So you can do a lot. You can make a room of pretty much any size here. Uh, and you've also got actually like underneath advanced options, you could make it like, oh, what is that? Oh, okay, that's an angle. You could make it curved, I think. Yeah, you, you can do a bunch of different stuff. But we're just gonna keep it very basic. So I'm gonna make the length of this first one here three. The second one, I'll make that five. 
and then I'll make this other one here minus three as well so that it's uh, there. And instead of adding another wall there, um, we don't need to do that. All we have to do is just check close walls and we've now got a rectangular box. Now, don't worry if you don't know the exact measurements of your walls um, because if later on, like say you get you know, adding all the other objects in your room and all that stuff. And then you realize you want it to be bigger. You can reselect that object there and all these options will reappear um, and you can change it there again. So this is just to start with. Think of it as a starting block. Don't get too bogged down in the details just yet. Um, the other thing I want to turn on is the floor, of course, and the ceiling. Okay, great. Now let's start positioning our camera. So I'm going to add in a camera which I guess it's better to do it in front view so that it's already rotated correctly. And then I'll position it round about there. I'll just move it forward a little bit, look through the camera view, and there we go. Look at that, we've got a room. We've even got a little baseboard down here, which uh, is perfectly matched to the size of the room. Again, another really handy thing. Um, you don't have to worry about doing that by hand. It's just, it's just nice, it's all done for you. So that's, that's really cool. So the other thing that, uh, that this, add-on, the Archimesh add-on allows you to do, is to very easily add doors um, or also add in windows. So let's just let's just focus on the windows. So the, if I click any of these buttons, you can see there's two window types, rail windows and panel windows, and it'll place it wherever your 3D cursor is. So a rail window looks like this, and a panel window looks like this. Very similar, <laughs> honestly. There's not a terrible amount of difference to them. Um, you can do some fancy things here with your, your window panel. You could make that one smooth. Um, I honestly just think this rail window here, uh, you, you can also change the uh, the window type there or whatever you want to do. I, I personally think this rail window is just fine as it is. So that's the one I'm going to stay with. So let's just keep that. I'll delete this one. Now you'll know that actually uh, there's a number of objects here, right? So if you just try moving this, Actually, you can't even move that, okay? Because it's, uh, I guess it's one of the settings is it's, it's turned off. But anyways, there's, uh, there's one, two, and then three, four, and five objects when you add in a window. And they are four. So this one here, this outer edge here, this is the one which you select to have all your settings here displayed. Um, these other ones here, I guess you can just move them left and right if you wanted to make the window slightly open. Um, this outer box here, that is a boundary box and that will be used to cut a hole in the wall, which I'll show you in just a second. So just ignore that. And then finally down here, you've got the empty, which you can use to move the window somewhere else. Okay, so uh, very handy. Um, all right, so let's just move this to where I want the window to be, which happens to be on the right hand side of the scene here. So I'm just gonna move it there. Now I think, I don't know what this will do, but if I set this to 90 degrees, um, you can see that it's rotated at that. I mean, I don't know. You could just rotate that empty. I don't know <laughs> if that would do anything different. But anyways, I've just typed in 90. And I'll move this up. And there we go. Now, you might think, come on. That's not a window. That is a wall with a little bit sticking out of it. Where is the window? Where's the hole in the wall, right? So to do that, it's very, very simple. You just select the wall and then hit T and then up the top here, you've got an option that says auto holes. So if you click that, you can see we now have a hole. So what it's done is it's taken this, um, this boundary box here and it's used it and it's automatically added it as a Boolean to our wall here so that it cuts a hole in it. And the good thing is, is you can move this window wherever you want and that hole will go perfectly with it. So again, I mean, it's not terribly complex what this add-on's doing, but it does save you time. And when it comes to making architecture especially, time really is very important because there is a limit to how much you can do and how much you will withstand as an artist. And at a certain number of hours, you'll clock in and say, that's enough. So when it, uh, the software can do more for you, it'll allow you to do more work yourself later on and make the scene better. So anyways, um, let's make another window. So I'm just going to select everything there, make sure I deselect anything else, and I'm going to hit Alt D. This is just to save time because I don't want to have to make sure that I create another window exactly identical to the other one. So set that as auto holes again. 
Sometimes, like if you hit Control Z at all, um, you'll notice that the walls become solid again. So then you just have to hit auto holes. Um, or I think you could just double tap, tab, edit, whatever. Um, but anyways. Okay, cool. Now that same process that I've just uh, I've, I've just explained for you. So the Archimesh add-on will do a bunch of other things as well. So you could add in a door if you wanted to. Um, and again, it would work the exact same way. You could make an auto hole there. And you can see we've now got a door on both sides. Uh, really, really handy stuff. Uh, I actually don't want a door though. So I'll just move this out of here. Uh, oh, and with that door there selected, you can also change like, you know, the side that it opens on uh the the type of door it is uh, the handles you know all that stuff so it, it is a really cool time saving out and you can also turn on hints so it shows you like the measurement of your walls which is really handy if you're a somebody that does architecture um you want to know these measurements so it's really cool to have this um all turned on it's really awesome um and i haven't done any books lamp or any of that other stuff but anyways cool stuff so now what I'm going to do, now that I've got the windows in place, I've got the room to the basic measurements. They could change later on. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to add in a cabinet. Um, so if I add in a cabinet, let's just, okay, I'll just position this cursor over here. Actually, let me just put it there, move it there. Uh, right. Now, if I go cabinet, which is right about here, if I click this, you can see that we get a bunch of options. It's not in the uh, the properties on the right hand side. It's down here in the toolbar. So the cabinets, are, for whatever reason, they're a little bit different than the rest of the objects. And the biggest one, and honestly the most annoying thing, is that if you select something else or or do anything else, like I move my camera or whatever, I lose all those options. Okay, and I, I can't get them back again. Right? They are now gone. So this cabinet. Whatever settings that I had for the cabinet is now permanent. So it is a little bit annoying. I wish that it didn't behave like that, but it does. So what this is to say is, is that you want to make sure that your 3D cursor is wherever you want your, three, your, your cabinet to start. So I'm going to position it. Let's just make sure it's down here, down there. And then I'll move it to sort of a bit midway. Maybe about there. So I want this right hand side here to be my cabinets and the left hand side, I'll leave that as my shower. So now I've done that, I'm gonna click on cabinets and there we go. So just like before, you've got, um, it, it sort of behaves quite similarly to the room in that you've, you've got number of cabinets so you can increase this. And then every time you increase it, you get a whole bunch of options underneath it and it looks really, really confusing. So, and the other thing is, is that they're not named terribly well. You have to hover over them in order to see things. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little bit hacky, this, this cabinet one. But uh, other than that, the add-on is great. So this first one here on the left-hand side, this cabinet, I'm going to make this a double door just by setting that to double. This middle one, which is cabinet two, I'm going to make this a drawer set. And I'll change this to uh, four of them like that. And you can also change the type of the handle. So you could, uh, you know, cycle through it, have a look at different ones you want. I think for my original one, I went with, uh, I think it was that, but then the one I'm going to go for is these ones, these little dots here. I like this, uh, or not dots, you know what they are like buttons, right? I like them. So I'm going to keep them. Uh, the one on the far right, we could make it a double or we could make it a single large, yeah, make it a little bit interesting. Let's, oh, hang on. Oh, it is making it large. It's just going out the side of the room. Okay. So I'll make that one a little bit bigger. Like it's an extra large, wide opening thing on the right there. So I'll make that 0.75. Um, maybe that's even too big. 0.7. Yeah. And then maybe that one here, 0.75, because that's double doored. Dumbledored. <laughs> double doored. I wonder if that's how his name came about. Like J.K. Rowling sitting in a, in a room. She's trying to think of another creative name for one of her crazy characters. She's like, oh, ceiling fan, window, double door, Dumbledore. <laughs> uh, hilarious, Andrew. All right. So now what I'm going to do, now that I've got the basic sort of look, I mean, you could tweak this if you want, but honestly, you can change this by hand faster. 
after you get out of this, really. So um, actually, I might, well, let's move that sink back about. Th this sink here is like the bottom baseboard. So I'm just shrinking it back a little bit. So uh, yeah, something like that, just so that you get a little bit more space underneath it. Because I noticed in my renders, um, if you don't have, like if this baseboard is too far forward, then the light, you, it hits the light and it doesn't look like it's sort of separate. It looks like this big, huge, chunky cabinet. So I'm just, uh, just pulling that back a little bit. All right, cool. All right, and now, now that we've done that, we can get rid of all those settings and I'm just gonna move these handles down just so that they're in the center there. Um, and we can just tweak it to look however we want, which is cool. I'm doing it by hand, which is not usually recommended, but what else do we have to go off? All right, cool. Now these cabinets are very, very basic. Um, you can see that if you get in close here, there's no bevel, there's no, there's no real anything um, to look at. And if I just load up, uh, you can see the, you know, the reference images that I've got here. Actually, those aren't really that strong of a reference. Let me go to the house very quickly, close down Reddit, because that's what I was doing before I started recording. Um, I see the code shop by department, bathroom vanities. You can see that most bathroom vanities, they have some sort of inlay, this, this inset um, sort of look to it, this bevel effect. Hey, this is the exact vanity that I actually modeled from scratch uh, for my final scene. Um, you can see it has these little sort of bevel inlays there. Now it's not necessary, honestly it's not, but you'll notice that when it doesn't have it, like if it's just a plain, uh, plain draw, I'm trying to find one that is actually really plain. Uh, duh, 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 duh. So you can see, mo like it's very hard to actually find one that is plain. If it's like this, you can see it does look quite cheap. It looks very fabricated. Um, this one looks especially cheap. Like I don't even think these drawers here line up <laughs> and there's like a gap for this one, but there's not proper gap. Yeah, it's, that's, that's a really poor one. Um, but anyways, the point being is that this, this cabinet design here, you wanna start thinking about you know giving it some frills. And since this is the modeling part of the tutorial, might as well do it right now. So it's very easy to do. We wanna add these insets. So we're gonna start by selecting the front face, which I just did, and then hitting I, and to, uh, which is to inset. It's the inset shortcut key, of course. Um, and I will click right there. And let me just pull up a reference so you guys, otherwise it just seems like, you know, we're just clicking around randomly. So it's very hard to see on this edge here, but you can see there is one, two, and then the third step down. So basically it's inserted a couple of times and it's extruded back sort of each each time. So the way we do this is I'm just gonna extrude this down to create the first little step. And then I'm gonna inset it again by hitting I like that. And then I will extrude it back again. And then I'll hit I to inset it again like that. And then I'll extrude it back one more time again. Okay, so you can see already that looks a lot better, but it will look even better, 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 if it, uh, if it has a bevel effect to it. So a bevel, if you don't know, um, it's to correct something that computers have, and that's that every object in, the, in, in a computer world is, uh, is sharp. So you can see the edge of this countertop here, it's, it's at a 90 degree angle which if, it, if that physically existed in real life, you'd cut your hand on it. So these angles don't exist in the real world. Every, every angle, sorry, every, every object is slightly smooth, even like a paper edge. So the quickest way to do that is to add in a bevel modifier. So with my cabinet door here selected, I'm gonna add in bevel. And what this does is it adds a slight edge to, uh, to all the edges of your, of your model. Now by default, the width is huge. So I'm gonna dial that back just by holding down shift and then drag it back till it looks, you know, you don't have to go for my exact measurement. Remember, I'm just eyeballing this. The time that you spend is a lot more than I could spend uh, in a tutorial. So I'm just going something like that. And then the segments will smooth it even further. Okay, so it's not much, you know, it doesn't look like much right now, but when you do the render, these little edges will pick up the light, it'll reflect more light back, and it'll just feel more realistic. Okay, so that's that done. So what we can actually do is if I select that door and yeah, 
If I select that door and then, hmm, do I want to do it for that one as well? I guess I should. Hmm. Yeah. All right. <laughs> select those doors, then shift click on that and hit control L and then select object data. And what that's done is it's now copying this data right here. Now you can't really see the uh, our cabinet doors because they've now moved around because they were placed like it's, I think it's copying that point. So basically you want to move back your cabinet door like that. But you can see it now has that same edge there, that, that, that same uh, insetting, right? Because it's now using the same data. So that's what, uh, that that's, whoa, where is it? Huh. I was going to demonstrate how, how they all move at once, but anyway, oh, I guess you have to go like that. Yeah. Anyways, point being is if the, if you make a change to it, it will now reflect it across every door. So that's, that's why we used Alt D. Uh, sorry, that's that's why I hit Control, Control L, uh, Control L, Object Data. Gosh. All right, now I'll move that little button across. There we go. And then the last door over here. Now this one's different because it is a different size. So what I'll do is I'll get it to sort of where I want it. And then I'll click this little button here so that it makes it a single user. And now when I change this uh, in edit mode, move that across to be whatever size I want it. Oh, that's right. That was supposed to be bigger. And then I was gonna move all of them across. Let's do that so that it lines up. There we go. Okay, so this, this door over here is uh, is a lot bigger. Um, it's actually really huge, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Maybe it was better when it was about the size it was before. Okay, now the thing with these cabinets is there is a lot of objects that are included with the, uh, whatchamacallit, with, when, when you add them in here. So it's got like shelving and stuff behind it. These other ones have got one for like every single drawer. So it's a little bit difficult, like trying to think which one am I supposed to move in order to move the whole cabinet. Okay, it must be that one. Okay, there we go. Um, but anyways, I'm now just gonna move that across to there. There we go. Um, now these countertops, I'm actually gonna delete these two and I'm just gonna extrude this one out just so that we can make it one continuous countertop when we add in the, uh, the textures later on. Um, so that, yeah, it's not separate objects. And then I'll do the same thing with this baseboard at the bottom there. Extrude that out. Something like that. That's pretty good. And now I'll just move it back to where it was originally. <laughs> Okay. All right. Now, so now we've got, oh, actually one, one other thing. We haven't got the, uh, the bevel modifier. So we want to make sure that we copy this modifier here. Um, so I'll select those doors there and then click the, uh, the door on the left, the last one, then hit control L and then select modifiers. There we go. Now I'll just do very quickly. I'll do the exact same thing with this drawer here because, um, we want them to match. <laughs> that would be nice. Cool. All right. Yeah. See, this is the this is the thing. When you're making architectural scenes, interior scenes, there is a lot of modeling. There's a lot. It's like that's why most people don't render architectural scenes. When you look on the Blender Artist forum. There's a whole bunch of single objects. Somebody will model a cup. They will model uh, uh, a, a chair. They will model X, Y, Z. But when you do an architectural interior, it's like you need to do a hundred of those objects uh, <laughs> all together, which is just crazy. So, and the other thing is like in the process of making this as an example. Um, okay, actually just before I do this, you can see th these drawers are designed so that they move in and out, but you can't actually move them in any other axes. So if you see that, just hit N, go right to the top and you'll see that you've got padlocks next to the X and the Z. So just uncheck those and now you can actually physically move it. And the reason I wanna do that, of course, is that I want to hit Alt D and then just create them down again. So yeah, so when you make an interior, it's like doing a hundred of those and it's just, uh, it really is daunting. That is why professional 
architecture, visualization artists, whatever, anybody you see on like Evermotion or, or ArtStation or whatever, these, these architectural renders, they all use architectural model packs um, because there's just, uh, I'm also just gonna make this, share the same materials, good. Because there's just no way nobody, like you can't build a library yourself of all the different furniture types and couches and everything you'll need. Um, it's actually, uh, it's really crazy. Um, all right, great. So if you wanted to, you could add like another little like, like door edge here. I might just do that just to show you what I mean. But uh, essentially, if I just copy that little baseboard down there, shift D, rotate this because in between each of the doors, you often find um, there is a, uh, I don't know what you call it, like a gap, like a piece of wood that is the gap between the next, before the next door starts. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'll just bring that to the top. I'll make sure that that only starts there. Yeah, just like that. Exactly like that. And I'll make a copy the modifier there. So we have the same bevel. I'll move all these drawers and that across as well. Whoa. Come on. And there we go. Aha. You can see it's all slowly coming together. You know, and I could do another one there if you wanted to, but uh, whatever. <laughs> There's only, uh, yeah, it's only so much you can fit into a tutorial. And I think we need to move along. We got stuff to do. Okay. Whew. Getting there. All right. So now, now sort of the point, uh, I guess we could get it. I mean, you could get into the lighting or if you know what you're doing. Um, or in our case, I'm, I'm just going to start. I, I mean, we need something here on the left-hand side. So I'm going to make it a shower. Uh, and thankfully, the shower is a lot easier to model than the, uh, the cabinet here because it's just a plane of glass. We won't do the, uh, the tap uh, because that is a little bit too much work. That will be your homework. We'll get to that uh, towards the end of this tutorial. I'll set this to solidify. Okay, so I've just made this plane here. And um, essentially, I just want to yeah, just make a separate little area here, just off to the left like that. And this is to be the little shower cubicle, right? So a little bit of a gap there, I guess, like maybe room for a rubbish bin or something. Not not too much. you got to have room for them in the shower. Gosh, small showers really are the worst, aren't they? That's what I, I hated about Europe when I was visiting Europe is like we, we stayed at this Airbnb when I was going to the Blunder Conference and it was like uh, like a one of, like tr the original Amsterdam building, like really tiny, narrow building with like every room is on a separate floor. You got to climb up these like, like 90 degree uh, <laughs> staircase. Uh, it was crazy. And then the shower itself was like in this like around two doors, which you had to kind of maneuver yourself around because one of them closes into the other one. And then you get inside, it's all black tile. So it already feels small. There's like one tiny light. And then it was this shower bubble thing, like this modern shower, but it was installed into this old style building. Oh, it looks so garish and gawky. Yeah, I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. And then of course it has that smell, that mildew. Uh, that, that's why like old buildings, they have character, but I wouldn't want to live in them because they're just not designed for the stuff that we have today. The plumbing, the room that we have, the, you know, there's no room to put a desk or a computer, you know. Anyways, so I've added in the plane here for our shower and we want it to actually have like thickness to the glass. So I'm going to add in a solidifier modifier. And there we go. That's our plane of glass. And uh, if you wanted to, could rotate it and you could make a door on it. Why not? Probably should have a door. All right. Now I hit Alt D, which was a mistake. I should have hit Shift D because now I'm going to edit that thing and just make it a little bit longer that way. And that'll be the door. Haha. <laughs> Lovely. Now you can see our windows are gone again. So oh, there you go. Double tap. Um, uh, go. Yeah. Double tap tab on the wall there. And we've now uh, got them back again. Whew. All right, now you can see that the window sill here. Yeah, let, let's get into the lighting and uh, and some other stuff, right? So the the window sill, just adding a bit of detail here. You can see that it's actually sort of clipping on that edge there, 
which is uh, a little bit annoying. And the annoying thing is, is that if you actually try to change the setting for the window and make the window sill thicker, um, oh, I should probably save this before it crashes. Um, <laughs> I have actually found sometimes I use the add-on and especially moving stuff with the ceiling, like it crashes sometimes. I reported a bug and it was fixed, but it had it happened again just recently. So I'm just very careful using the add-on. Uh, oh, come on. What happened? Auto hole. Okay, some. what happened to the auto hole? Come on. Don't be daft. Auto hole. Okay, well, that's the first time that's happened. Well, I'll just, I'll set it up myself then. Auto hole, difference, whatever that is, B mesh, and then it's control hole without that one. Okay, that was weird. That shouldn't happen. Anyways, the, I was going to say, the annoying thing is, is that if you adjust this thickness, it did it again uh, for the window sill. <coughs> it adjusts it in the wrong way. So it's still clipping through the hole in the wall. Um, anyways, it's a little bit annoying, uh, but not as annoying as that Boolean thing. What happens there? That is so weird. Anyway, so all I'm trying to say is we'll just move the sill up by hand. Hey, there we go. So we have pretty well come to the end of this tutorial, uh, but there is some homework for you before you get to the next part. Okay, so in the next part, we're gonna be adding the materials, the textures and the lighting to create the final render. Um, so the modeling stage is now done, or at least I am, I've am. i finished the modeling uh, of what I'm gonna show you in this tutorial. Uh, now, in order to model all the little objects that would appear on the table, the pot plant, the, the tap, the mirror, the lampshades, all that stuff would just take too long. Um, and honestly, it's pretty easy to do. So what I want you to do as homework, homework, uh, I know that probably makes you groan, but I want you to have a go at modeling some of these objects uh, yourself. So these objects are these right here. So the first one is this handle for the shower. Very, very simple. It's just a cylinder on a little spin, uh, little, uh, little tool there uh, to create that handle there. Next, try having a go at the mirror. So the mirror is really simple. It's just a, a circle which has been extruded inwards. Very simple. Again, the same thing with this lampshade here. Really simple. It doesn't even have a bulb in it. Uh, it's just extruded out a few times uh, and then it is done. And then finally, the faucet. The faucet is a little bit trickier. You do have to do a lot of you know extruding, scaling and all that stuff. So I recommend getting a, a reference image if you can. Um, and then at the end of it, uh, yeah, having a nice, nice final looking faucet at the end there. And then again, if you want to have a go at doing even more stuff, you could make some little shampoo bottles. Very easy to do. Um, if you've got a pot plant, a flower, that's really, I know that's pretty out there. But if you if you really want to have a go at making some interior scenes, uh, those are some things to think about. Or if you just want to, you know, if you're lazy, um, or maybe you already know how to make this stuff and you just want to save time, I'll provide these models here for you. The lampshade, the mirror, the faucet, and the uh, the shower handle as well, uh, if you want it. Um, so I'll put those up on Blender Guru, um, at least until Polygon starts offering models. So uh, so they're up uh, for you if you wanted to uh, wanted to download them. You could do so by clicking on your screen. Um, anyways, other than that, I will see you in part two, where we will be making this window look like glass, so that we can shine light through it. Uh, and then adding the proper materials for the, the cabinets, the countertop, the walls, the floor, um, and just making a nice final looking image uh, to finish off on as well. And if there's anything else, by the way, that you want to uh, tweak for your scene, feel free to as well. Like maybe you want to make this uh, baseboard sort of, you know, stretch to the bottom there. So maybe you want to uh, grab, uh, uh, grab that there you know, ex move that over there, make that so that it touches the floor, make one that goes on the other side as well. You know, all this stuff, um, go for it. Th this is your opportunity. Any little touches, anything you wanna make, anything you wanna tweak for your scene, feel free to do that before you jump into the next video. And you can click the link right here on your screen uh, and that'll take you to the next video. See you there, bye.